Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Joshua Sullivan, pastor of Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Welcome back to ATP Ask the Pastor. Today, we've got a question about our background here. Somebody asks, Dear Pastor, what are some of the books in your collection or library? I know that you've read from Luther's works. Uh, do you use Bible commentaries? And if so, uh, what authors? You know, that's a good question. Um, and not a question that... Uh, uh, may be interesting to everybody, uh, but it's, it's something that I think everybody should ask of their pastor. In fact, uh, a really interesting question uh, that I enjoy getting from time to time from people both in the parish and outside of the parish is, hey, pastor, uh, you know, what are you reading at the moment? Uh, because you can tell a lot about a pastor by the things that he's reading, uh, and not just, not just once in a while, but on a regular basis. You know, what's he, uh, what, what, what's he feeding his own soul with? What's he reading? Um, how is he challenging himself uh, theologically and whatnot? So yeah, uh, we got quite a bit of books back here. I'd love to be able to tell you I've read them all, but that'd be lying then. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to uh, what sorts of books and commentaries do I like to read, you know, you mentioned in the background here, you can see do, 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 right there, these red books here. Uh, those are Luther's works. Uh, yeah, I love Luther, obviously, because I'm a Lutheran pastor, but uh, it's more than just that. Uh, Luther, being the tool that God used uh, to reform the church after the Middle Ages, then uh, he, in his entire theology, uh, in his exegesis, his, his interpretation of the scriptures, then, uh, he is so centered on Christ and so centered on the gospel of justification by faith alone that uh, this is something that permeates all of his books. Uh, something uh, Not just his commentaries, not just his lectures on different books. Uh, he was a professor at the University of Wittenberg, and he lectured um, all throughout his life then. And so it's not just uh, these sorts of things, but all of his works then. Uh, you can tell that he is so steeped in the scriptures, and not only in the scriptures, but in the gospel as the chief article of the faith then. Uh, so it's not uh, just those uh, you know, like um, uh, lectures on Ecclesiastes or on Galatians. Those are two that I'm uh, perusing through right now for Bible studies uh, here at Holy Cross. Uh, but so uh, it's it also then, uh, Luther's really interesting to read too then because he translated the entire Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, Apocrypha, into uh, his mother tongue, German, uh, for his nation and for his uh, fellow man to read then. And so he has an intimacy with the original languages, uh, with the scripture then, uh, that, that comes out on every page then. So what, whether you're Lutheran or not, uh, Luther just has such a great grasp of the gospel. Uh, and it's something that uh, uh, really just comes forth on, uh, comes forth and shines through on every page. You know, one example. You know, since we're asking this about the library, let me give you a few examples. Uh, for class on Sunday mornings, we're studying Galatians right now, and I've been uh, knee deep in Volume 26 of Luther's works. Then his lectures on Galatians from 1535. Uh, this is the second one in the set. Uh, the next one is his 1519. The first uh, lectures on Galatians that he did. Uh, but but he presents the gospel here in such a great way. Uh, in such a clear and pure way uh, that, uh, you know, reading this volume is much more than just simply uh, exegetical knowledge and information. Uh, but Luther really comes out as a pastor uh, and a curer of souls who are burdened by their sins and the wrath of God and the law. Uh, so I'd highly recommend volume 26 of Luther's works there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, we imbibe a lot of Luther here. Now, as far as modern commentators are concerned, I do have modern commentaries, uh, modern from you know, my own lifetime, but also uh, here in the last. 100, 200 years. And to be honest, generally speaking, um, I don't find them to be that helpful. I have one or two go-to series, uh, which we'll get to here in a minute then. But for the most part, I found that a lot of modern commentaries, especially recent ones in the last 30, 40, 50 years, uh, even conservative commentaries deal so much with uh, issues that I would consider to be ancillary or a periphery. Uh, so you know, people are still dealing in commentaries with higher critical, uh, more liberal attacks on the scriptures and whatnot. Now, that sort of stuff needs to happen. Uh, however, uh, it's not always the most edifying discussions and whatnot. It's interesting uh, from an academic point of view, uh, but really, they're just kind of rehashing old territory for the most part. You know, the one series uh, from the last century then uh, that I do go to on a regular basis is Lenski. Uh, I don't know if you can find these anymore. I don't think they print them. I think you've got to find them used. That's how I find mine, uh, found mine. Uh, let me get my verb tenses there correct. Uh, but I go to Lenski an awful lot. Lenski does a great job. Again, he's a Lutheran, uh, and he does a great job with uh, the Greek of the New Testament. His set is only the New Testament, and uh, it's very thorough. Um, 
very thorough, at least as far as dealing with the text, uh, having real good insights. Again, Lenski's always a good go-to for me because he notices things in the text, details in the text, uh, grammatical or otherwise, that I, don't want, uh, that I don't always get. And so it's good to have another set of eyes, especially a well-trained set of eyes on the text uh, to learn from as well then. So that's about as far as I go with the modern commentaries. I think these are from, what, the 1920s, I believe. Let me check here. Oh, yeah, 1937, uh, copyright 1946 out of Wartburg Press then. Uh, so these are older. If you can get yourself a copy of Lenski, they're well worth having then. Uh, now, something that I've gotten into in the last, oh, about year and a half to two years then, is also ancient commentaries, patristic studies, uh, writings uh, that come from the first couple centuries, anywhere from uh, 2nd century AD all the way up to, oh, uh, 6th, 7th, even the 8th century uh, AD, early church stuff. And this is really interesting then. Uh, the Lutheran reformers loved the early church, especially Martin Chemnitz, uh, um, editor of the Book of Concord, loved the early church, uh, Johann Gerhard and the generation after him, and these guys were able to cite church fathers just on a dime, just like that. And they did so, and they studied the church fathers to demonstrate then the, uh, the Catholicity of the Lutheran doctrine, meaning uh, they said, uh, you know, the church has always believed this, and what Rome is teaching currently isn't what the church has always taught. And so uh, if you read through the Lutheran confessions, they're always quoting Augustine, they're always quoting Ambrose. There's the catalog of testimonies in which Chemnitz uh, is going through all of these fathers, both of the Eastern Church and the Western Church, uh, to demonstrate that the doctrine of the Lutheran Church is the doctrine that the church has always held uh, from its very beginning and throughout all the centuries and whatnot then. Something that I just started reading after the first of the year because I got it as a Christmas gift. Uh, Cyril of Alexandria's commentary on John. You used to, you know, uh, th this is uh, you know, a little inside baseball, I guess, uh, but you used to just have a really crummy and archaic translation of Cyril's commentary on John. And uh, most recently, a couple of years ago, one of my old, uh, one of my former seminary professors uh, translated this and it's published through IVP, Ancient Christian Texts, in two volumes. Uh, I read a couple pages of that every night. And Cyril's becoming one of my favorite church fathers for a lot of different reasons. But uh, again, it's great to have an older point of view. And again, I'm finding the same thing like that Chemnitz and Gerhard found, and that's you know, the ancients are teaching the same things that uh, we confess in the Book of Concord. That brings me to the last thing. Uh, you know, again, I'm a Lutheran pastor, and so I'm a little biased, but uh, you know, one of the best, if not the best, exposition of the scriptures is your Book of Concord. Uh, this is a Jacob's edition. This is my favorite one here. Uh, but the Book of Concord is so much more than just textual, or uh, rather confessional texts. Uh, they're dealing with the scriptures. And the Lutheran confessors' big concern was ultimately the comfort and the consolation of souls that are terrified by the law. And so uh, you know, the Lutheran confessions uh, deal with all sorts of passages from all over the entire range of the scriptures. And, and it's always my first go-to when I'm studying theology. Uh, this is something that a Lutheran pastor needs to be reading on a regular basis, uh, just because he takes his ordination vows to teach according to the scriptures as it's confessed in the Book of Concord, the Confessions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church then. But the insights in here, biblically, uh, are just marvelous then. You know, the entire point of this, uh, of pastors, you know, accumulating books, uh, you know, the, the, a book for a pastor is a tool. Uh, you know, my father was an auto mechanic for, you know, almost 20 years of his life, maybe even a little bit more than 20 years of his life, and he had tools all over the place. Uh, and he had some tools that he only used once. But, you know, if you've ever fixed a car or if you've ever done home improvement projects, you understand that when you get to that point and you need one specific tool, and if you don't have it, it's a real pain. But if you do have it, uh, and even if you've never used it before, but you still have it, it's still a good thing. And that's what uh, pastors really do with their books and their libraries. And that's why so many of us are bibliophiles, uh, collecting books, even at the expense of, uh, you know, starvation you know, personal necessities, things like that. Uh, so again, these are just some of the books that I like to read. These are some of the go-tos that I uh, enjoy. Uh, anything from the Lutheran Fathers, uh, anything from the Church Fathers I can get my hands on. Love these sorts of things because it reminds me and teaches me that I'm not the first person to approach these texts, uh, but that other men, far more intelligent and far more pious and devout than I am, have approached these texts, and they have insights into the scriptural text. Um, which people just don't have 
anymore, in my opinion. So that's why it's good uh, to keep reading these sorts of things. Thanks for asking me, and while you're at it, make sure and ask your pastor what he's currently reading, and do so on a regular basis, uh, A, to make sure he is actually studying and bettering himself theologically, uh, but also just to pick his brain and see what sorts of things he's interested in and what he's using to feed his own soul. Thank you for the question. As always, if you've got a question about this or anything else you'd like to ask the pastor, shoot me an email, atpholycross at gmail.com. We'll put you in the queue. And we will get to you as soon as we are able. We'll see you next time.